So I see all these posts on Facebook and on social media and even these stories on the news about like how it's so hard to get a job and no one's hiring and how all these people feel like they're applying at you know all these different places and no one's getting back to them, right? And listen, I wanted to make this video from the other perspective, the perspective as an employer, someone who's actively hiring, going through applications, you know, literally right now and at least once every few months to let you know why if no one is getting back to you and you feel like you're applying everywhere, why maybe that is 100% on you. Now, this is way off topic from what I usually talk about on this channel. So for anyone here looking for e-commerce advice, you know, we'll get back to that tomorrow, but I feel like this is really important. Honestly, even for anyone who's not just looking to get a job with us or for literally any company, because Right off the bat, I gotta let you know, every time, right, we post a new job opening, we get hundreds of applications. So if you're thinking, yeah, same thing, I apply somewhere, and I'm sure hundreds of other people apply, you are absolutely correct, but if no one's responding to you, it's not simply a volume thing. I'll tell you, if I get 100 applications, automatically it seems like 80 to 90 of them, like just there's no way that we can even offer them anything or wanna bring them in for an interview. So let's go through the reasons why if you're applying places, your application might just get rejected immediately, okay? The first thing that I look for when I'm going through these is the question and answer portion of the application. So we use a tool called Workable and Workable posts our job listings to Indeed, to ZipRecruiter, to all the big job boards. Now they go out there, people submit their resume, they write a cover letter, and they answer a few basic questions. Or they should answer a few basic questions because they're required, but a lot of times people will write NA or no or not available. So listen, if you're applying for a role and the role description says you need to have experience with WordPress or you need to be familiar with SEO, and then in the question section it says, do you have experience with SEO? If so, to what extent? You you write no, then, or you write NA, then that's not gonna work, right? Because that's simply really asking you if you have the experience that was already already stated in the description. So if you don't, why waste your time uploading a resume then saying no, okay? And again, this is, I'm not doing this to, you know, for any reason other than to save you time and effort because if you don't have the skills that it already says you need, then there's, there's just no point, right? The next huge thing that I look for when going through these uh, resumes is grammar. So with the, you know, Q&A portion, a lot of roles involve communication and a lot of it is written. So sometimes maybe you're gonna be working on people's social media accounts. Sometimes you're gonna be writing emails. Sometimes you're just gonna be making notes and you don't have to be the best writer in the world with an English degree. Listen, like my grammar is not perfect at all, but if you are applying for a job where there's literally five questions you have to answer that are one sentence long each, if you're leaving out periods and not using capitalization and you're spelling words wrong, you know, how does that reflect on on you like it's that's an instant you know cross off like sorry you're not gonna get a call back so if your grammar is not great, you know, you want a tip, use a tool like Grammarly. It's uh, free for, you know, I think it's like a Chrome plugin and it'll correct your grammar. So at least do that, right? At least read the job description, at least answer the questions accordingly, at least make sure your grammar is good, if not perfect, because there's a lot of other people applying. And those few things, based on what we see every time we get a new job out, like that'll put you in the top 20% answering the questions, reading the job descriptions, not having massive grammar mistakes. Okay, moving on from there, you might have noticed I didn't mention anything about degrees or grades or previous, you know, job history because we really don't look at a lot of that at all. Like, I don't care. Like, everyone that works here, like, I don't care where they went to school. I honestly, it's probably bad. I should know better, but I don't know where, when he went to school. I don't know what their GPA was. That stuff's not important. What is important is, you know, if they're a good mix with the company and have the same type of passions and desires and if they're honestly honest and, and have that extra degree of caring. Here's a perfect example. One of the questions that we ask on our different applications is are you interested in marketing and do you follow any blogs, podcasts, or I think YouTube channels, something like that, that's how we word it. And all I'm looking to get out of that question is is the person actively interested in marketing because we're marketers and if they are, then what, you know, what do you listen to? What do you read? Where do you get your information from, right? Totally simple question. And I started realizing that 
all these people were saying that yes, they are interested and their favorite marketing podcast is marketing with coffee or like marketing over coffee or something. And I was like, why is everyone saying that? Like I've been in the marketing space for, you know, a dozen years and I've never heard of this. So then I was like, you know what? Let me go on Google and type in top marketing podcasts. And sure enough, there's a top 10 list and number one is listed as marketing over coffee. So now every time I see that, I think, okay, this person really isn't interested. They just went on Google, they searched top marketing marketing podcast and yeah, I'll use this name. So that now for us is almost an immediate disqualifier. So how does that apply to you? Well, if you're applying for jobs and there's a question like that, just know you should at, at the very least be honest. And if you're not interested in it, then it's probably not a good job fit and you can move on to the next application. So the point is you don't need to apply for every job in the world because if you're doing this type of thing where you're just randomly shooting at applications, you're using Google to get quick answers to the questions, you're basically making stuff up or you're just saying, no, I don't have the experience, it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to benefit you. That employer is never going to reach out to you and be like, hey, your application looked awesome. Do you want to come in for an interview? So where does that leave you, right? How do you actually get a job? Okay. So here's what works for us. When people apply and again, they answer the questions and they have the experience that we state we're looking for, when their answers are grammatically correct, or at least as far as my eye could see they are, there's no obvious mistakes. And when they show a genuine interest in what it is we do, that is huge. And it's such a small percentage. So again, yes, there's tons of people that apply for every job, but if you do those things and if you have a genuine interest in what it is you're applying to do, I promise you, I'm not saying everyone's gonna call you in for an interview and hire you, but your success rate of landing interviews and then getting hired is going to be so much higher. Now, one step that just takes it, you know, over right over the edge and the people that, that we usually bring on to join our team are people that when they apply, they, they are these people that are passionate about it, so they will go to our websites and they'll read through them and they'll even ask questions about our websites or different things that we've published or they'll you know include links to things they've done that are relevant for this exact role and they'll take that next step above and beyond going through the basic questions that are answer, uh, asked but they'll show a genuine, genuine interest and the reason they do this is because they're genuinely interested, right? They could spend more time on these applications because they know, wow, I found this application online, right? I found that this job is available and I could see that this is something I want to do. So they'll invest maybe the 20 minutes it takes to have one of those applications versus someone sitting there on the computer on, you know, whatever, LinkedIn or ZipRecruiter going, yeah, apply, okay, whatever, yeah, apply, whatever, apply, whatever. Why is no one calling me? So if you're looking for a job, and again, if you're watching this video and, you know, you're used to our e-commerce videos, don't worry, back to that tomorrow. Nothing wrong with having a job though. So if you're having, if you want a job, spend the time finding the roles that best suit you, the ones that you actually could provide real value in, and then put some time into the application. You don't have to write an essay. You don't have to do all this work, but make it seem like you care because that's what's going to get employers to want to respond to you, to reach out and to get you seriously a job that could turn into a huge, huge career. So just wanted to share that as like a little rant because I've seen this over and over again. Um, not to say there aren't great people out there because there definitely are. We have a ton of them and you know, I love everyone we work with here. But uh, if you're looking for a role, you know, focus on that guys, find what you actually want to do and then show that potential employer why you want to do it. And you're going to see, you're going to see great results. So hope you got value you. If you did and you're not liked this or subscribed to this channel yet, hit the subscribe button, like the video. Thank you everybody for, uh, for dealing with this video if you're a dropship person and I'll see you guys all tomorrow for the next episode of Dropship Weekly. Bye.